Inspired by the captivating tales of Arabian Nights, this shoe is a manifestation of a purple dream where style and imagination intertwine. In harmony with the vibrant summer vibes, the C.1 Orient in its luscious purple and white color combination exudes a sense of energy and individuality. C.1 Orient represents the perfect blend of style and comfort, making it an ideal choice for those long summer days and nights. From casual outings to weekend adventures, the C.1 Orient is here to elevate your wardrobe. What's up, y'all? It's Daniel the Chumalier, and in this episode, we're talking about a new-to-me brand, and maybe new to you out there also, Flowers for Society. They are a German-based brand, and I've seen their pictures, their ads, their videos for quite some time on social media, especially because this company, this brand, these shoes were recommended to me by longtime fan and contributor Angelos, who I believe is a uh, all the way out in Greece and a new father of twins, so congrats. And also, in a weird sense of timing and coincidence, Nice Kicks released kind of like an article post on their Instagram page. This is not an ad for, for Nice Kicks whatsoever, though. If they want to pay me, I'll gladly take it. But they, they posted some pictures, posted some things about this shoe. So it just seems like Flowers for Society is in the air, especially if you go visit their website and their socials. And you can see they're having some sort of buy one, get something free sale. But again, not an ad, not a plug. I just got this shoe months ago, finally got around to wearing it and trying it out. So today... We're going to talk about that Flowers for Society C.1 Orient in a purple and white black colorway. As mentioned earlier, Flowers for Society is a German-based footwear brand bringing together the extensive worlds of sneakers and NFTs. The label's mechanism was simple. Purchase its debut C.1 sneaker and in turn receive a personalized NFT, which was the key to all of the future brand's releases. This means that only those who owned the NFT could get their hands on future limited edition releases and collaborations, also meaning it becomes more valuable over time. Flowers for Society creates such unique silhouettes and styles by pulling on classic sneaker influences such as court and skate culture, but placing those in a modern technological context, pushing the boundaries of what we've come to expect from a pair of shoes. The sneaker has an all-over gray makeup with a mix of mesh and suede. The sculptural details on the midsole and upper give the sneaker a futuristic appeal. At Flowers for Society, they firmly believe that businesses have a responsibility to contribute positivity to society and the environment. Guided by their core values of social awareness, transparency, purpose, and compassion, they are dedicated to implementing sustainable practices throughout their operations. All of their products are made from vegan and 100% recycled materials. The shoes feature a midsole made from a renewable resource, 30% sugarcane. This eco-friendly alternative provides the same level of quality and durability while reducing the dependency on non-renewable resources. This Flowers for Society C.1 Orient retails for 160 US American dollars and you can find this shoe and other colorways and silhouettes pretty much in a full-size run on their website. Now when it comes to fit, my foot is about a 9.25, but that shoe size does not exist. So depending on the silhouette and depending on the brand, I either go down to a nine or go up to a nine and a half. It really just depends. On this brand, since again, it's new to me, I took a chance and ordered my true to size, which was a size nine. And I think that worked out just perfectly. I have a normal size foot, not wide, and it's not thin. I don't like a lot of lockdown on the midfoot and I do enjoy wiggle room in the toe box. And again, this size nine seemed to fit true to size. However, much like 350 V2s, you can see that it has somewhat of an aggressive toe box, meaning it goes at an angle somewhat quickly and aggressively. Now, for some people, that may be too much and it brushes up against your big toe or your pinky toe, or you just don't like that kind of feeling. I'm not sure if I would say, well, just remove the insole to give yourself that little bit of uh, extra space, which seems to work for me in some silhouettes and brands or go up half a size. I really wish I could tell you, well, just find a shoe and try it on, but it is a German-based brand, and I'm not sure how many of these shoes are sold in America where you could walk in and find them and try them on. I will say that maybe just removing the insole would give you just that extra little bit of room that you would need. Again, normal size foot, not close to being wide. If you are wide, I'd probably suggest going up half a size, especially because the fit in the toe box area. 
Now, when it comes to comfort, this shoe looks like it's gonna be pretty squishy and bouncy like React and like Boost. And it is not that. It's not uncomfortable, don't get me wrong, but if you look at it and see all the white and think that's pretty marshmallowy, it's not. It's more firm, it has less bounce, but it's not overly hard and extra firm like a basketball shoe or a shoe that uses some sort of outdated technology. If you don't like a lot of squish, you don't like a lot of bounce, this shoe's gonna be for you. And it's definitely, again, not overly firm where you're gonna feel a lot of foot fatigue based on the midsole technology that's underfoot. I would say it has a similar touch and feel to maybe one of those Nike React 87s or the Elements, whatever that silhouette was, or pick your favorite silhouette with a little bit of plastic type mesh. This feels that way. And for some that may not be comfortable and you may not think that that's great, but looking at the price point and looking that this is a somewhat new sneaker brand, well, you gotta make decisions. You can't just totally go in on one way or the other. And some people don't like that sock-like fit. The water gets on it, it gets to you on your socks, gets to your feet and bleh. This one is definitely a little bit more water resistant. I don't have any proof of that, but I feel like I could stand in the rain a lot longer wearing this shoe than I could wearing, say, a Roshi or a Yeezy 350 or an Ultra Boost. Now, as you see in the video and in my hand, I have replaced the laces with flat white laces. The shoe comes pre-laced with black. It also comes with an alternate pair of white oval laces and uh, the white isn't exactly like pearly rich white person teeth um, but it's uh, it, it looks good it feels good what's interesting is on here and I don't know if you can see this but it's a like a slit to get the laces and it is kind of difficult to get it even with just a, a flat lace because your aglets your lace tips are round it was a little bit of a like challenge to get them in but I got them in there and I was just trying out different laces I'll probably go back to the black though I do enjoy how sporty this pearly white rich white person newscaster teeth looks on there um, but it's it to me this is a casual shoe that I'm gonna wear around the house wear around the yard wear around to do things um, but I'll probably go back and forth and see what happens on it when it comes to the laces but be curious what you think about the black laces versus these uh, more off-white beigey laces or uh, like I said a rich newscaster journalist Tom Cruise white veneer teeth laces there are at least half a dozen other silhouettes that I could name that you could say this shoe looks like or pulls inspiration from. And I'm not gonna go into details about that because look, there's a quote from a person who wrote a book and I'll probably put something up here probably. Uh, it says something to the effect of, if you steal from one person, uh, you're, you're a thief. But if you steal from many people, you're basically creating new art. And the reality is you can only make a shoe so many ways. The Jordan 1 isn't the first basketball shoe to look that way. It just happens to be currently the most popular basketball shoe that looks that way. But we can go back to, um, oh, I don't know, Adidas. We can go back to Vans. We can go to Converse. We can look at other silhouettes that are significantly older or maybe slightly older that have that similar look and vibe. So yes, can you see some React in this? Sure. Can you see some Ultra Boost in this? Sure. Can you see some Asics in this? Yeah, absolutely. Can you see any sort of runner technology aesthetic look in all of this? 100% absolutely. But here's the thing. This one, this company is trying to be uh, sustainable using renewable resources and keeping the price point fairly inexpensive. 160 US American is not cheap, but Ultra Boosts were retailing for 180. We are looking at foam posits that are hitting 250 US American. Yeezys were hitting 300. J Balvin 2s are up to 300. Like ridiculousness. So the fact that they can get this shoe at 160 and it looks really good and it feels okay on foot, sure, that's a win in my opinion. Now, I think the shoe looks way cooler then it does feel comfortable on foot. And to me, as I get older and older, I want both. I want the shoe to look great and I want it to feel great. Uh, am I gonna wear this shoe all day? I could, I could. Do I prefer to wear maybe a different silhouette like a Vomero or a New Balance 9060 or an Ultra Boost? Yes, but different shoes have different purposes. But again, uh, this shoe's really well put together. The materials feel fine. It doesn't feel cheap. I wouldn't say that this feels like a brand new shoe company i would say oh they probably had a number of years maybe decades putting this thing together um, because it doesn't look cheap it doesn't feel cheap i've tried new brands of shoes people whether they are uh, customizers that have created new shoes or shoe influencers that have teamed up and blah 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 and um, i still stand by i think masha's shoes are the most well-made uh, shoes from a non-major sneaker company 
these are really good. These are really good. And there are so many different colors and variations of the silhouette on their website that you can take a look at. If there's one con, and this is not a con against specifically this brand, I just don't like split laces, uh, split tongues rather. Um, I don't know the purpose of it. Is it a running thing? I don't know. It doesn't bother me uh, like uh, maybe some of the other silhouettes like the Asics that they use for the Ronnie Fied Kith Marvel thing. Uh, it doesn't bother me as much as that one does, maybe because they're so thin. Um, but for some reason, I just don't really dig split tongues. I dislike split tongues more than I dislike like the burrito tongue that wraps over. I think, what is it? The uh, EQT, uh, Adidas EQT, which is a super comfortable shoe. That's the only thing I would change. I would still keep the, 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 the thickness of this with the squishiness that you have here on the tongue. I would still keep that. I just wouldn't have a split tongue, but that's a me thing. So it's not a con against this company. I suppose my other con would be that much like the Under Armour logo, you have the Flowers for Society logo here on there and it just really, really pops out. Um, and it's to my eye, please take zero offense, I'm not a graphic designer. It is a little busy for what it is. I get it, there's the FFS, I, I get that. What I do like is how they have it way better on the uh, back heel right here. You can see it, it's uh, embossed, it's clear, it's in that transparent place. I think that's great and honestly i don't mind this flowers for society text that you have right here on the back i think that's great the only issue is this 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 one why don't you put it on the tongue you know but i guess that's what everyone does you would just put it on the tongue but regardless my two cons but this is not a flowers for society issue this one kind of is but anyway um yeah so there we go that's my thoughts on this flowers for society c.1 orient if this uh, is brand new to you, cool, check it out. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you are a longtime supporter of it, like Angelos or maybe anyone else out there, uh, what do you think about the comfort? What do you think about the fit? Are there any other silhouettes I should look at? And am I alone in thinking, ah, just, just get rid of this and the, and the split tongue? And what do you think about the laces? Anyway, uh, I know this is a longer than usual review, but it's a new brand and I wanted to get a little bit more into what the company was, what the shoe was, and uh, hopefully give you an idea of like, oh, this is cool. But yeah, I, I dig this. It's not as squishy. It's not as squishy as you would think it is. Ugh. But it still looks super cool um, and I'm down with it. So let us know what you think about this silhouette, colorway, and company in the comment section down below. So to all of you out there, wherever you are, Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and just chill. Till the next episode.